Insidious Chapter 3 is not directed by James Wan. It's actually directed by his longtime writing partner, Lee Whannell, who's been with him all the way back to the first Saw movie. And this film is a prequel from the last two we've already seen. This film tells the story of a young girl who's recently lost her mother. Her father's played by Dermot Mulroney, and he's having a hard time balancing a job as well as two kids. Oh yeah, and there also seems to be a man who lives in the vents who can't breathe. That's horrible. I'm actually looking at the vent on my ceiling right now. Hmm. Okay. I really enjoyed the first Insidious movie. I thought it was very surprising. It took me off guard in almost every way. It was one of the scariest PG-13 movies I had ever seen. And you know what? I enjoyed the second one as well. Not as much as the first one, but I did think both of these are considerably better directed horror films than most horror films released, especially since James Wan released Insidious 2 and The Conjuring in the same year. To be completely honest, I wasn't really that excited to see this movie. For one, James Wan's not directing it, and it's the third film, and generally horror films get worse as they go on, especially in franchises like this that are made for cheap, that actually make a lot of money. Surprisingly, I actually thought this was better than two. Not quite as good as one, but still a really good horror movie. It's actually very well directed. Like, that's one of the biggest surprises is actually Lee Whannell did a fantastic job directing this movie. There's a lot of great uses of suspense and tension building. And if you guys saw the video I did, the problem with horror movies today, one of the biggest things I talked about was the rampant jump scares that are just filling our screens in the horror films nowadays. Like a friend walks up and touches his friend's shoulder, or a cat jumps out of a dumpster, or just stupid things like that. One of the things I praised in that video though was that Insidious as a movie does use jump scares, but they're never false scares. There's always something you're actually supposed to be terrified of that's there and oh my gosh, that's terrifying. So yeah, that's a fair use of jump scares and gratefully Insidious 3 continues that string of fair uses of jump scares, because there's plenty in this movie, but you're not gonna see a bird fly at someone's face or someone turn around, oh my God, it's just my dad. Like it's always some creepy ass thing that's there that's meant to scare you. And that's one of the reasons why I was actually continually startled and most of the time on the edge. Also really impressive in this movie, is the acting. Lynn Shea, who plays Elise, the psychic. My God, that's one of the best performances from an actress I've seen so far this year. She was really good. Like, it's really easy to see a movie like this and just be like, okay, it's the third in the franchise of horror movies. Who cares? Turn myself off. But Dermot Mulroney as the father, he was great. And the daughter did a really excellent job as well. All the acting in the movie is actually really strong, which lends to the suspense because they're taking it seriously. You know, it's not like a wink at the camera type deal, they're taking this super over the top haunted house movie seriously. And I like the main creature in the movie as well. There are some truly creepy sequences throughout the film. I do have a problem with that thing though because they don't really explore its origin enough. I wanted to know more about like, what is that thing? Why is it there? Why is it attached to this family? What's the reasoning behind this? And since they don't explore that, there isn't really that connection there that you want. It's just a creepy thing that is creepy and it works in that way. But I was just wanting more explanation. Around the halfway point of the movie, it did lose some of that suspense. It was chugging along at a pretty good rate and then it kind of dropped off for a while, but it picked back up again towards the third act. That middle portion was just a bit repetitive and it kind of went on for a little bit too long. But as someone who admires horror filmmaking and does like to examine the art of building suspense, I gotta give major props to Lee Whannell for taking the reins over in this franchise and I think making a better movie movie than the last one. Let me just put it this way. Insidious Chapter 3 is a much better movie than any third film in a horror franchise has the right to be. And that's my best way to describe this movie. It is much better than it could have been. It has really good directing, it has great performances, and there are genuine scares throughout this movie. I didn't like that they didn't explore the origin of the creature enough, and I didn't like how it kind of dropped off for a while in the middle, but for the most part, I had a lot of fun with this movie. And even though I liked it more than two, I'm gonna give it the same grade I gave that film. Insidious Chapter 3 gets a B. I think if you're a fan of horror films and you like the first two films, you'll probably find things to enjoy with this movie, so check it out if you want to. Also, look forward to my review of Star Wars Episode Two: Attack of the Clones in my continuing series of Star Wars reviews. That's gonna be coming to you next week, and this weekend I also have reviews for Spy and the new Studio Ghibli film, and hopefully not the last, but possibly when Marnie was there. Those reviews are coming to you very soon. Thank you so much, as always, for watching, guys. I really, honestly appreciate it very much. And if you like this, you can click right here and get stuck manized. Yeah.